I'm Dr. Janelle Anderson, former college professor turned manager in a large corporation turned entrepreneur. And not just any entrepreneur. I've made it my life's work to make organizational life more effective and fulfilling. So welcome to Working Conversations, the podcast where we digest and translate research and ideas on workplace dynamics and serve up to you the most interesting and actionable strategies to make your workplace conversations and your relationships more effective, productive, and influential. If you're looking for proven tools for your workplace toolbox, you're in the right place. Now, let's get after it. Hello and welcome to another episode of Working Conversations. Today's topic is hacks for staying focused. And we're gonna go through 10 of them and we're gonna go through them rather fast. Now, before we get started, let me say that these hacks are helpful for staying focused in a disruptive environment, whether you are working from home or working at the office. And the disruption that we're experiencing these days has everything to do with people and pets in our physical spaces, for those of you who are working from home, and also everything to do with what's going on in the world, with the public health pandemic, with world politics, and everything else. So the disruption might not be in your physical space, the disruption might be right between your ears. But regardless of where your disruption comes from, I'm pretty sure we can all agree that these days it is harder than ever to stay focused on work during the workday. So I'm going to give you these 10 hacks for staying focused. And if you're interested, you can follow up with the show notes. This is workingconversations.com forward slash four for episode four where I give a quick recap of these 10 hacks as well as links to any of the products or other websites that I mentioned today. All right, let's get down to it. Number one, use your calendar or a planner and be intentional about this. Do it in a way that you're actually going to follow through with, especially for your independent work. The work that you're doing with other people, like in meetings and so forth, that's going to happen. If you've got a meeting on your calendar, that's not what I'm worried about. I'm talking about your discretionary time during the workday. Yes, that's right, your discretionary time during the workday. That's where I want you to be using a calendar or a planner and do whatever it takes for you to follow through. You've probably heard me talk about this before. I use the Clever Fox Planner and anything that I really want to hold myself accountable to, I write in ink in that planner because I don't like to see something in ink that didn't get done, something that doesn't have a check mark next to it. Drives me crazy. So use your calendar. If you can do an online calendar and stick to it, by all means, that... I, I'm so proud of you for that. I can't. I will ignore an online calendar unless it's a meeting with other people. I will ignore my online calendar. I need it to be a paper-based system that is on my desk that I am constantly looking at throughout the day. That, for me, is what does it. But use your calendar or some sort of a planner and be really intentional about your discretionary time, pairing that discretionary time up with the items that really need to get done during the day. So that's number one, use your calendar or a planner. Number two, Get those to-do items out of your head. Your head is a terrible place to store a list of things that need to get done. Write those things down in an existent system. This could be Evernote. This could be OneNote. This could be a piece of paper or a notebook that you use to keep your to-do list. It could be in that same planner or calendar that we were just talking about. But write those things down in an existent system. And these are work things and non-work related items. Take the first 10 minutes of your workday to just get things out of your head. And again, it, this needs to also be a list of non-work related tasks. What's for dinner tonight? Oh, I need to stop at the store at some point before dinner. Oh, one of my kids outgrew his pants already. Two inches he's grown since I bought those pants in the fall. I need to order new pants for him. I'll do that online because I don't have time to go to a store and buy him something. Um, the bathroom sink's not draining properly. I need to snake that first. If that doesn't work, I need to call a plumber. All of those things and so much more. I mean, that's what's on my mind right now, but uh, what's on your mind is going to be a very different list. But that takes up valuable brain space. And if it isn't written down in an existent system, your brain is just going to keep coming back to it going like, hey, hey, don't remember, or, don't forget, you need to check out that bathroom sink before it backs up. Hey, 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 get that kid some new pants. He's running out of pants. You're doing laundry every other day to keep him in pants. It takes up valuable brain space that shows up and interrupts our workday all day long. 
Of course, you've got work priorities that are taking up valuable brain space as well. That laundry list of things that didn't make it into your calendar or planner for today, that's also taking up valuable brain space. Now, some of those things, and, and you need to get those out on a list somewhere. Again, that could also go into your planner or your to-do list on your calendar, into your Evernote, into your OneNote, wherever you like to write those things down, but get those things out of your head. And also think about if you listen to my episode on fragmented time, think about are any of these items things that are going to take anywhere from one to 15 minutes? Because if they are, they should go on a special list that you can take on when you have that fragmented time, when a meeting ends early, or when you find yourself with just a few minutes between things, instead of checking email, grab something off of that fragmented time list and knock it out. Get those items, again, whether they are personal items or work items, into a list because otherwise you're going to take up valuable brain space. Your brain is not meant to hold on to lists of things for long periods of time. So number two was get those to-do items out of your head. Number three, prioritize your work. Ask yourself this question. If only one thing got done today, and I'm talking about that work that you're doing during your discretionary time, not the important meeting with the boss or whatever, but if only one thing got done today during my discretionary time, what is the most valuable thing? What would deliver the highest value to the rest of my team, to my colleagues, to the customers we serve? What would be the most valuable thing for me to get done today during my discretionary time? So what would that one thing be? And then add to that, if I could do two other things, making it a list of three, what would they be? Again, I'm thinking, I want you to be thinking about your discretionary work time only, not the time that you're in meetings. Maybe one of those things is actually spending some time preparing for a meeting so that you can go into that meeting and really knock it out of the park. That's fine. That could be one of your three things. That might even be your top thing for the day is to prepare for a meeting. But make sure you know what those priorities are right as you start your workday. Again, in those first 10 minutes of your workday, as you're writing down those things, getting that stuff out of your head, make that list of my one thing and then my two other things. So you've got your top one and your top three. And if you are the kind of person who evaluates your day against what you, you know, at the end of the day, against what you planned for the day, this is your metric. This is what you're measuring against. Did I get that one thing done? Did I get those other two things done? And how, how does my day stack up compared to what I planned for the day? So that's number three, prioritize your work. Number four, I want you to think about spaces and places that you inhabit throughout your workday. For those of you who are still co-located, you know you get up out of your desk, you leave your regular place of work, and you go to the boss's office. And when you're in the boss's office, you have a slightly different persona. Perhaps you carry yourself a little bit more professional. You're thinking about the impression that you are giving your boss. Or when you're in the big boss's office, you're probably even more present to the persona or the professional identity that you're carrying off in that space. Uh, When you're in the conference room, you're perhaps more collaborative or you're in a brainstorming frame of mind. So when we're inhabiting different spaces and places throughout the day, we are in a different frame of mind. We have a slightly different persona in each of those. Now, if you are working from home, it is a different story because many of us get stuck in one place tethered to our laptop, whether that's at the kitchen counter or in a spare bedroom or a home office. I want you to be up and moving about in the spaces and places in your home. Even if it's a tiny apartment, there are other spaces and places that you can inhabit. So if you need to do some more creative work, move to a place that inspires you to be more creative. If you need to bang out some work where you can have no interruptions, make sure you find a place where you can close the door or you can do something else to indicate to other people that you may share space with that this is not a time for you to be interrupted. Perhaps when they see you with a headset on, they know or they assume that you are on a call and you cannot be interrupted. So sometimes it can be as simple as that, but I would love for you to be up and moving about inhabiting different spaces and places. And again, for those of you who are not working from home, who are still in the office, again, you have that regular rhythm to your day where you're moving about the day to different spaces for different activities. But there are also many other places in most of your buildings where you can change that environment in order to bring about a different style of thinking or a different style of work for yourself. Many of you have cafes style areas in your buildings, uh, coffee shops, or just tall tables, 
and or booths, that sort of thing. You also maybe have some space set up in your building that is library style, that's a little bit quieter. Maybe it even has bookshelves in it. And so many more spaces and places throughout the building that give a different vibe. And so pair up the work that you need to do with a place that's really gonna support that kind of work, whether that's working from home or working in an office environment. So number four, change up your spaces and places based on the work that you need to get done. Number five, put your phone on do not disturb. That's right, my friends. All your smartphones have a little DND button. Know where, find where it is, use it. Put your phone on do not disturb. Put your computer in presentation mode. When you put your computer in presentation mode, it's going to turn off notifications. Or you can just go manually shut down all the systems that send you notifications. And if you really must, you can go ahead and set it up, uh, set up your filters and your availability so that your boss's calls and your boss's messages get through if you absolutely must, but turn everyone else off when you're using that discretionary time where you need to get your own stuff done. If you do not, the phone is going to ring, the texts are going to go, the messages are going to come through, and you're going to be tempted to look at them. And even if you look at them for a split second, it's taking your attention off the thing that you were working on. And as neuroscientists keep proving to us over and over and over, the human brain is not a multitasking system. The human brain is a single processing unit. It can do one thing and only one thing at a time. So if you turn your attention to the text that you just got, then it's going to take you a bit to get back into whatever else you were doing. So put that phone on DND, put your computer in a state that all those systems that send you notifications are not going to send you notifications. That is also going to include your social media. So again, when you do DND, it's usually going to take care of this for you on your phone. But if you have social media open on your computer, it's also going to pop up there. So turn all those notifications off so that you are not uh, distracted by those things. So number five, put that smartphone on do not disturb and turn off notifications on all your other systems. Number six, shut down your email. That's right, shut down your email. What shows up in your email overwhelmingly is other people's priorities. Sure, once in a while, it's you waiting on a message back from somebody else, but by and large, what shows up in your email is other people's priorities. So if you need to get your work done, do not hang out in your inbox. That is not where your work happens. Your work is happening in other proprietary systems or it's happening in a Word document, it's happening in in updating your company's website or whatever it is that you do, but your work by and large is not happening in email. Now, for a very, very, very small minority of you, you are getting your next customer service issue or whatever through an email alert. If that's you, of course, keep your email open, but set it up so only those messages are getting through and not everything else. So shut down your email is number six. This episode is made possible by Instacart. If you haven't already started using Instacart, now is the time, my friend. Now, I'm the first one to say that I actually enjoy a trip to the grocery store. I really do. But you know what I like doing even better? Making this podcast. When I was deep in the development of this podcast, outlining and recording the first few episodes, my kids reminded me that they needed to eat. Instacart to the rescue. In absolutely record time, Magnolia, my Instacart shopper that day, delivered chicken nuggets, milk, avocados, fresh berries, and a host of other groceries we needed. When life gets busy or when you just want to feel like royalty and have someone do it for you, there's Instacart. Get $10 off your first order when you sign up at workingconversations.com forward slash Instacart. Now, back to the show. Number seven is something called the Pomodoro Technique. This technique was developed by an Italian named Francisco Cirillo in the late 1980s. And he Francisco was using a kitchen timer in the shape of a tomato. Pomodoro is the Italian word for tomato. And Francisco was setting that timer for 25 minutes and working solidly for 25 minutes on one of those discretionary projects or you know, using that discretionary time. So this wasn't collaboration with somebody else. This is his own work. And not doing anything else during those 25 minutes. So 25 minutes of just doing that one thing. And this is instrumental, my friends, in changing how you use time. 
I use a slight variation of this. Instead of doing a, 20, a 25 minutes in length, I do 27 minutes in length many times, and then I do a three minute break. So I do 27 minutes focused work on a project I'm working on. Again, my discretionary work time. The timer goes off at 27 minutes and I haven't let myself look at email or social media or anything else until the 27 minutes is up. Then in that 27 minutes, I'm gonna get up, I'm gonna walk away from my desk, I'm gonna refill my water bottle, my coffee cup or whatever, you know, just take a little bit of time away from my work. I might check in on my kids distance learning wise, see if anybody needs a sharp pencil or if I have any message, text messages I need to attend to quickly. And then if my schedule allows, I'm gonna get back into it for another 27 minutes after I take that three minute break. And I can usually crank out a tremendous amount of work in 27 minutes. It is really remarkable. If you've never tried this before, take it on as an experiment, take on something that you were, you know, that you've been putting off. It's also a great tool for procrastination. And if, in fact, if you're a procrastinator, don't even go for 25 minutes or 27 minutes. Just say, I'm gonna work on this thing that I've been putting off for 10 minutes and just set the timer for 10 minutes. Now, you can always, of course, use a kitchen timer. I am not saying you need to go out and get one in the shape of a tomato, but if you have a kitchen timer and you wanna set that on your desk, that's great. You can always, of course, use your smartphone. Or there is this very fun cube timer that's got a bunch of preset times on it. I'll link to it in the show notes. It is a really fun way to set a timer for yourself. Again, it's got a whole bunch of different, uh, you know, it's, it's a cube, so it's got six different sides, so six different choices. And use the cube timer to have a little bit more fun with it. So that is number seven, the Pomodoro Technique. Number eight is called the 20-20-20 rule. Now we're gonna use a little liberty with our 20-20-20s, okay? So those of you who are by the book, you're gonna wanna be a little flexible with this one. So here's the idea. Every 20 minutes or so, because I know sometimes you're in a meeting that's gonna last longer than 20 minutes and you can't get away from that, or you're using a Pomodoro Technique and your timer is set for 25 or 27 minutes. So every 20 minutes or so, you're going to get up out of your desk and go to a window and for 20 seconds or more, you can it can last longer than 20 seconds, you're going to look at something that is 20 feet away or further, in nature, ideally. Now, if you're in a concrete jungle, then you're just gonna try to find something at least that's, you know, that's moving or alive, but 20, 20, 20. So every 20 minutes or so, I mean, frankly, if you did this like twice a day to begin with, it would make a big difference. So, but you know, if you can do it more often than that, that's great. 20 minutes, every 20 minutes or so, you're gonna look at something that is 20 feet or more away, outside in nature ideally, for 20 seconds or longer. And here's why. When we spend our whole day in front of a computer, our brain is constantly adjusting and constantly recalibrating, especially if we're spending our time in those virtual meetings, you know, whether it's Zoom or Teams or uh, WebEx or whatever you're using, your brain is needing to recalibrate because we're not quite in real time. There is a fraction of a second that we are still off. Even with the best bandwidth, we're off a fraction of a second. And our brain is reconciling that all day long. If you can get up away from the computer and go stare at something outside in nature, it helps your brain recalibrate, reset, and just get back in sync. And then when you come back, you are that much more able to focus and really be present with your work. So that's tip number eight is 20, 20, 20. Again, every 20 minutes or so, look at something 20 feet away or further for 20 seconds or longer. All right, number nine. Number nine, I call this the four buckets. The four buckets. All right, I want you to think about your work landing in these four different buckets. And if you really wanna take this on, take out your calendar from what you did yesterday or the day before and categorize your work into these four buckets. Bucket number one, this is independent work where distractions are tolerated. And I'll give you an example from my life for each one of these. Independent work where distractions are tolerated. I could be processing some email or uh, drafting a document that is not a super intense document. I could be um, you know, preparing some slides for a training that I'm doing. Independent work, distractions are tolerated. If one of my distance learner kids needs their laptop rebooted or needs something from me, I can, you know, I, I can help them with that. If my phone rings and it looks like it's a client calling, I will take that call, okay? Independent work, distractions are tolerated. That is bucket number one. 
Bucket number two is where you're doing collaborative work where distractions are tolerated. Again, collaborative work where distractions are tolerated. So this could be you and a colleague are talking through something. Again, if you're in the office, you and a colleague are talking through something and your boss swings by, interrupts you with a question. Okay, distractions, totally tolerated, doesn't throw you off. You guys can pick up right where you left off. Um, another thing, another example from, from my world, collaborative work where distractions are tolerated. I have a few clients that I do a lot of work for where I do uh, training for their organization and have done for quite some time. And I know these, co- even though they're my clients, I know them about as well as you would know a coworker. And so if one of my kids needs something or the dog needs to be let out while I'm in a meeting with them, they totally get that. And the same thing happens with them when they're in meetings with me. So those distractions can be tolerated and it's not a big deal. So that's bucket number two. Bucket number three is your independent work. Again, that discretionary work we were talking about earlier where distractions are not tolerated. We want you to be focused and really heads down cranking out some great work during your discretionary time here. That's what bucket number three is. Independent work where distractions are not tolerated. Now I'll give you an example from my work When I am writing something, I've written a couple of books, if I am writing something and I am really deep in it in my writing, it's often the case that, you know, I can think faster than I can type. So I've maybe got like two or three paragraphs that I've thought through and I'm furiously typing them as fast as I possibly can. And if I were to be distracted during that time, I would completely lose my train of thought. Sometimes I would lose brilliant ideas, and I certainly would lose the minutes of work that it took in my thinking to get to that point. So independent work, distractions not tolerated. If you're a creative person and you're working on some new designs, this might be for you that independent work, distractions not tolerated because you've got all these visual ideas bouncing around in your head and you're trying to capture all of them and get them into some sort of existent system before you lose them. So independent work, distractions not tolerated, bucket number three, so important. We're going to come back to this one in a second. And then bucket number four, this is where you're doing collaborative work and distractions are not tolerated. So this could be you're in the uh, you're in a meeting with your boss or maybe your big boss, your boss's boss. And, you know, if your phone is in your pocket and it's buzzing, you're probably not going to look at it when you're in that meeting with the big boss or the, the boss's boss. So Collaborative work, distractions not tolerated. It could also be a a variation of of bucket number three where you're collaborating with somebody and you're doing some really creative work and you don't want to lose that train of thought. So the two of you or the three of you are really focused on this one thing. You're collaborating and you do not want to be interrupted. So that's bucket number four. Now, I want you to go back up to what we were talking about in technique number one, using a calendar or a planner Technique number two, getting those to-do items out of your head. And technique number three, prioritizing your work. And think critically about bucket number three. I want you to schedule focused time for yourself for those discretionary projects that you need to get done. Schedule that for yourself. Get that bucket number three stuff in your calendar, in your planner. And if you want to take it to the next level, pair that up with technique number four. Pair it up with spaces and places that are really going to facilitate you getting that kind of work done, facilitate you and inspire you to do that that independent work wherever that may be in your home or in your building for those of you who are in the co-located work environment right now. Again, you're also going to want to do the other things we talked about too. Put your phone on, do not disturb, turn your notifications off, turn your email off, all of that so that you really can maximize your focus time. You might even use the Pomodoro technique. I mean, all the techniques that we've talked about can lead you right up to this point so that you are using bucket number three really, really critically. So that's technique number nine is thinking about buckets one through four. Again, that's number one is independent work where distractions are tolerated. Number two is collaborative work where distractions are tolerated. Number three is that most critical one, independent work where distractions are not tolerated. Bucket number four, collaborative work, distractions not tolerated, and really focus your efforts on number three, independent work where distractions are not tolerated. Now, technique number 10. This is going to be our end cap today. I want you to pair up with bucket number three, time of day when you are at your best. When do you do your best work? 
Are you a morning person and all you need is a cup of coffee and you are raring to go and your brain is delivering all the creative juices and the best ideas and your highest levels of productivity? Or are you maybe somebody who hits their stride mid-morning and that's when everything kicks in after you've had some breakfast and maybe a a few other things happening and you've got some momentum going in your day, maybe that's mid-morning. Or for some of you, it might be early afternoon, it could be late afternoon, and some of you might be nocturnal people who late at night is when you are at your best. I want you to determine that for yourself, and you probably inherently already know that. that you know, you, I'm sure you say, oh, I'm a late night person or I'm a morning person. You know when you're at your best. And if you don't, experiment with a few different times to figure it out, but most of you probably already know that. But pair that time of day to the best of your ability with bucket number three activities. Now that might mean you pushing back on some meeting requests from other people. So if you are an early morning person and you want to get that stuff done and your boss wants to meet with you early morning, now with your boss, you could probably say, hey, hey boss, I'm at my very best at eight o'clock in the morning, right when you scheduled our one-on-one. Is there any chance we can move that to early afternoon? I'll still, I promise you, I'll still deliver. I'll still be at my best, but I need to get some of my own work done right at eight o'clock when I'm just first starting my day. So push back when you can. I know there are meetings that, especially those meetings that have tons and tons of people in them that you cannot push back on because there are so many schedules that need to coordinate to find a time when everyone, everyone can meet. But when it's one of those, also question, do I really need to be at this meeting, especially if it's happening in the time when I'm at my very best and I've got that bucket number three work that needs to get done. So that is number 10. Pair up when you are at your very best with that scheduled focus time where you're doing independent work and distractions are not tolerated, your bucket number three work. Oh, I look forward to hearing what you do with these 10 techniques. And remember, I've got links in the show notes to the Cube Time and the Clever Fox Planner and a bunch of other stuff that we that we talked about in this episode. And also, I've recapped all of the 10 techniques. So you can find that at workingconversations.com forward slash four, the number four. All right, until next time, get after it. Thanks so much for listening. If you like what you're hearing on the podcast, head on over to Stitcher, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts and give us five stars and a quick review. It really makes a difference and it keeps us bringing you valuable content that you can put into play in your life. I'm Dr. Janelle Anderson, and this is Working Conversations.